You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin for supporting The Coffee Hour. You can find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live Uncommon. Speaking of Concordia University, Wisconsin, our college students uh, are are experiencing a whole different world right now in the midst of the pandemic. So we're going to go to our campus ministry expert, the Reverend Marcus Zill, the chancellor of LCMSU and the host of the Student Union right here on KFUO. Chancellor Zill, thanks for being our guest on the Coffee Hour today. It is my pleasure. Great to be with you guys as always. I was waiting for the Hi. Hi. <laughs> There, there we go. Now we have it. When you, when you mentioned, uh, <laughs> I, I was starting to think when you said it's a whole new world for college students. And of course, I'm thinking uh, it's a whole new world. <laughs> um, not not the Disney edition of the coffee hour. <laughs> <laughs> Getting a little punchy in isolation here. <laughs> how uh, How is the chancellor? How are you, Pastor Zill and your family doing Okay. Oh yeah, we are. Uh, we're down here. You know, I I'm deployed. I live in New Mexico, anyways. It just means that I don't travel as much and don't get back to don't get back to the the home office there. You know, the office there in St. Louis and to see all of you. So I'm um, I'm isolated. None of us are there either, so. Yeah, nobody's <laughs> there. So uh, it'd probably be the perfect time to go, actually. They're, but they're no, I, like... I, we're all hunkered down, just like everybody else, just trying to figure out how to. How to sort through this? It's it is a it is a strange time for college students. Everybody's um, on online education. Um, most summer schools are going to be around the country are going to be that way too. Some are starting to think about uh, how they're going to do things differently in the fall. I think the hope is that colleges in general will be back to normal in the fall. I don't know if that's going to happen, but of course, the big question is. How does that impact our campus ministries? Um, I get asked this a lot. How do I do campus ministry, uh, Pastor Zill, if uh, my, my students aren't around? You know, what does that look like? And I, we're still kind of stri- trying to figure that out. So what are you hearing from our campus ministries around the country, from campus pastors and campus ministry leaders? What are they reporting about how the pandemic is impacting college life for our students? Well... <clears throat> I think everybody's just kind of numb. Um, most of the college students have gone back home. Many of the, some of them are still around. If you're a grad student, you know, you don't necessarily, um, you know, if you're an upper level student, you maybe lived off campus and you might still be around. Um, have hearing stories of people having fire pits at their campus ministry locations. It's a great thing for social distancing. Put a little fire between you, uh, kill that <laughs> virus. Six feet, you know, it's, it's, you know, a lot of Google Hangouts and Microsoft, just the same things that everybody else is doing. Um, and our campus ministry folks and college students, are, of course, are, uh, are all techno geeked out as much as anybody. So they're doing a lot of creative things, you know, just like everybody else. But uh, there is a, there is a fear of, of, of the unknown. Uh, of course, there's also a lot of opportunities. There's a great opportunity for, uh, especially with this, the online stuff to have, to invite friends, um, other college students, other neighbors that, uh, sitting in their, uh, apartments, uh, in a, uh, ghost town of a college town and inviting them to join them for Bible study or whatever online and different things like that. It's a little less threatening necessarily, you know, than maybe just showing up for church. So there's always opportunities in this regard, but we're, we're still trying to figure this out. Not sure what the future is going to mean um, and how much it'll go back to normal, but we pray that it, it will. And if not, that we'll learn from this and um, and it, the whole new world will be a wonderful world for campus ministry. <laughs> have you seen or, or heard, I guess heard since you haven't actually gone anywhere. Uh, have you heard of, of um, innovations or ways that, that uh, campus ministry pastors and, and students are trying to, do new thing. I mean, the, the fire pit sounds like a great idea. I could totally do that in my backyard or something. Um, trying new things and, and, and trying to keep those relationships alive, uh, even when students aren't on campus. Well, you know what is amazing? Um, the, the, biggest, the biggest innovation that I've seen, and I hear about it a lot, 
is not what you'd expect. It's actually people calling up other people on their phones. What's a phone? <laughs> phones? What are those? <laughs> no, but in, in all seriousness, you know, people are getting, I don't know if you've noticed this, but people are getting Zoom fatigue. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's kind of like, okay, this, this, this is, is a substitute for church, I guess. It's not a very good one, but I guess it's what we got. But people are just, in terms of meetings, they're just, and they're doing everything. Everything is online now, right? Mm -hmm. They are even more getting to the point where I just want to talk to someone. Um, and there is, uh, there's something uh, different about even, even talking to you guys right now and to, to our listeners out there uh, to hear a, a voice and to have a conversation and to not have there be lag in, mm -hmm. in terms of audio and video. And I mean, what, what we have traded for just being able to see a little, a little one inch by one inch square of someone on our, on our computer <laughs> is, is really rather remarkable, but you know, most, most of, you know, I wouldn't say there's any great technological innovations, but I think it's more old school um, and most college students are that way anyways. It, usually uh, they're kind of like, you know, can we just kind of like turn all this stuff out and just just talk to one another? Can we have a, you know, they're craving something real and whatever can get you closer to being real and authentic and personal um, is the better. So I, I, I found that with, with myself, you know, I could sit here and offer all sorts of online this, that, the other thing. Uh, people are already kind of sick of it to a degree. And you know, I've found that uh, I just take, I spend a little bit of time each day calling up five or 10 um, of our campus workers out there and just saying, how are you doing? And I'm encouraging our campus workers to do that, to just, you know, you can try to do too much or you can just try to say, hey, you know, I'm just going to call around and say, hey, how are you doing? Let's talk. And uh, you'd be surprised at how far that can go. So it doesn't sound innovative. But it kind of is because nobody else, uh, people aren't getting together and actually socializing and, and frankly, talking is maybe even better than necessarily video. Hmm. Yeah, that that being in one another's presence is such a, an important part of campus ministry, I would imagine, just being able to be together. I know meals, fellowship meals and, and Bible studies together and the the gathering together for for services as well is such an important part of campus ministry not being able to be together i'm sure is is very challenging so i see what you're you're saying though with with, with phone calls it's it sounds old school but it, it but it's relationships it's and yeah. the biggest thing that young people crave is is a relationship and uh, and those are the things that are suffering right now and the question is how do you best how do you best build on those relationships and keep those relationships in a uh, social distancing world. How do campus ministries partner with students, home congregations and their, their home church pastors? Because they, you know, when there are many students who, when they're on campus, their campus pastor is, is really providing a lot of care for them, but they still have many of them, most of them hopefully have a home congregation, a pastor in their home church as well, who cares for them. And, and so now many of them are back home. What does that dynamic look like? How are campus ministries partnering with the, the home congregations? Well, I think that, uh, I mean, typically it, it's an essential thing. I mean, we used to talk of uh, campus pastors as chaplains um, because a chaplain, like with our military chaplains, are those that are doing something kind of in a transitory period. And that's really what college age uh, campus ministries are, are about, is providing chaplaincy during a time. Um and in many ways, <clears throat> that still takes place. Um, I always encourage our campus pastors to, you know, constantly, not constantly, but to uh, make sure that their home pastors are aware of who they're caring for and understand that if something comes up that they're not the not the only one caring for this young person. It's kind of like having a twofer. I mean, how great is that? You can have multiple, you get, you get two pastors for the price of one. And, <laughs> and but... You know, I'm not sure how that's shaking out right now. Um, most young people are, it's kind of like with regular parishioners. Um, 
I have, I'm here in Albuquerque. I have a pastor. Uh, haven't seen him in two months. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so that's the same with our students. So uh, it, pastoral care right now is kind of a weird thing in general. Um, but uh, I'm not sure how, how much of an impact this will have. But uh, um, I think right now it's really about, uh, about making those contacts. Um, it's a good time for our campus ministries to c- contact um, the pastors of, of many of their students just to check in on them and see how they're doing and, and work on those connections and relationships too. With just a minute or two left, how does the Student Union podcast then fit into this whole uh, array of, of student unions across the country and, and all of these pastors and the network of all of these people? Well, I think the Student Union podcast is the answer to all of our pressing problems at the moment. Um, <laughs> no, no, I mean, the, the whole idea of the Student Union podcast, it, you know, it's about we're sitting in the Student Union, we're having a conversation about things that that uh, that impact uh, college students directly or indirectly. And um, it's one outlet. Um, it's one of many. Um, but the encouragement of continuing to try to, you know, I've been having, um, you know, we've been talking about, uh, you know, you know, as, as, as you have as well with all of your other programming, you know, how all this affects Corona, you know, in this coronavirus world. Um, but then again, people, you know, I don't know if you've sensed this, people are kind of tired of talking about coronavirus too all the time. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, back in the day, the big word was catechesis about 15 years ago. Everything had to have something, something in catechesis. It's like, ooh, well, you know, we have to like almost talk about everything in the context of coronavirus and I suppose that's part and parcel of the time, but um, but we're just trying to use uh, the programming that we're doing to talk, you know, not only get people ready for for the you know when we come out of this, hopefully, but also to help them where they're at right now. Well, pastors, though we are all out of time, but uh, where can we find information on LCMSU? Where can we find LCMSU chapters? Well, you go to uh, lcmsu.org. Um, which will take you to the appropriate URL at the, the LCMS website, lcmsu.org. Very good. The Reverend Marcus Zill, Chancellor of LCMSU and host of the Student Union right here. In Bye. Canada. Thanks so much. <laughs> <laughs> take care, you guys. Thank you for all that you're doing to keep everything up and running. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Stay safe. You're listening to The Coffee Bye-bye. Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. <laughs> <laughs>